The firefight starts. Oh my god, it is so beautiful. Oh my god, well done. Oh, they're gonna leave them behind. And you see how the fire really exposes their position here. Exactly like in the actual battle. Hi and welcome to History Legends. In this video, we'll do a step by step historical breakdown of a fantastic Norwegian movie called The King's Choice. A lot of you have been asking me to react to this war movie. I'm pretty excited. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, they seem to be in high alert. By the way, this takes place the same day as the Danish war movie I reviewed, April 9th. Okay, we see the soldiers spreading out. I love the vibe of this movie. 20 seconds in, I just love it. I don't know what it is. I already like the scene. I don't know if it's just hearing the sound of the clicking of all the equipment, the heavy breathing. We feel the stress, even though it's not explicitly shown. I love it. All right, but you see that they're in full gear. So I think these guys were part of the, the King's Guard. The only guys with full gear, helmets, everything. So we see this young teenager. I love this perspective, it's amazing. But overall, they're all stressed because Norway, when the Germans attacked in 1940, Norway had not seen action, combat action in 126 years. This goes to show how unprepared they were for an invasion. All right, now they're just waiting. The waiting game, the hardest. So we can see they're in winter gear. That's pretty good. And we also see they have gloves. Excellent. You probably know this, but in winter, when it gets dark, it gets extremely cold. And let me tell you, I know a thing or two about winter. A few minutes outside without gloves and you just can't feel your fingers anymore. So forget shooting or reloading with dexterity. And I also love their winter gear. Excellent for this weather. All right, let's go. So they're patiently waiting for the enemy. All right, so we can see one small fire team here. There's a lot of men spread out. We can see even men here in the back. They're all lined up along this road. And if we take a look at their defenses at first glance, we can see that they're all positioned along this road. They formed sand walls and reinforced the structures with the uh, logs. But this also goes to show how little time they had to prepare, maybe a couple hours at most. And again, just like with Danish forces, you see how all the soldiers here are spread out. But I can bet that the moment the battle starts, officers will have a hard time managing all these men without telephones or radios. And also um, forget digging trenches in the cold, the hard soil, it's gonna take too long. So you see an officer running, they're running around. That was a problem of the Norwegian army. They didn't have enough, uh, enough NCOs. All right, so they know that the Germans are supposed to come from that road. And look at that. Amazing. Look at all the vehicles there. And this is what actually happened. A lot of Norwegian civilians fled Oslo. And when they faced this roadblock, they simply abandoned their cars, crossed friendly lines to go somewhere safe. And here you can even see the little bridge that was actually there in reality. And there is a river underneath, but the river was frozen because it was winter. But other than that, it looks very much like the battlefield actually would have looked like. I'm very happy. So they've been told Germans are coming, but they can literally stay there for hours. I think the waiting game. Okay, we can hear a vehicle. But the vehicle shouldn't scare them. They've heard a lot of them throughout the day, a lot of civilians. This might be a false alarm. By the way, check this out. So the helmet these Norwegian soldiers are wearing is called the M31, a copy of the Swedish model 1926. Since these guys are the King's Guard, they all were equipped with it. But before this battle, they were reinforced with civilians or reservists that didn't have access to this equipment. So all the others should have some sort of kepi. All right. Oh yeah, and take a look at the rifle. According to my research, he's holding a Krau Jorgensen model 1894. It was by far the most common model in the Norwegian army in 1940. 
it's actually a very similar model to the bolt action rifle that Danish troops were using on April 9th, 1940, just like we saw in my latest movie reaction. And in this battle, a couple Norwegian soldiers were also equipped with the carbine model 1912. I usually get flagged by you guys in the comment section whenever I talk about weapons. But honestly, I like to read your comments and this allows me to get better. Weapons is not something I'm an expert in, but I'm getting better. As you know, learning is a continuous process and that's one of the reasons I made this channel to have this interaction with people talking about war movies, video games and everything. So keep up the good work guys, proud of you. All right, so we have the young one who's pretty scared. Everybody's ready for battle. Okay, we have a bus, but could be civilians. We don't know. Okay, we have more troops here lined up, but did you notice how they're not protected by anything? They didn't have time for logs or anything. Now, the only thing I'm wondering as I'm watching this is why are they not actually positioned behind the trees to have some sort of cover, some sort of concealment, because right here they're all in, in front. I don't know, let me know in the comments. But it was historically accurate that all the Norwegian troops were lined up, very spread out, because there was a train station here and basically they, they covered a huge area. As a matter of fact, 93 Norwegian soldiers were sent to defend this roadblock. They were really unprepared and they had very little ammo available. It's very similar to the Danish movie. You have to do the best with what you have available. All right, at this point, we don't know if it's enemy forces. Like, it could be civilians. If they just shoot, might kill Norwegians. But, 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 check this out. Thing is, Germans actually hijacked four civilian buses to transport troops to this position. So that might be confusing for the defenders. But the one thing that might be off is that there is, if you look closely, a Norwegian military truck. The Norwegian defenders know they're not expecting any reinforcements from this area. They know something is off. And when they don't see any civilians coming out, okay, confirmed, enemy troops. Okay, confirmed. In actual events, Norwegian troops immediately opened fire on the Germans as they were getting out of the vehicles. And apparently, this is when German commanding officer Spiller was mortally wounded, right at the start of the battle, and some say he was even the first casualty. Okay, you see the Germans preparing. You see all the troops lined up like this. It's amazing. For once, we can see the true scale of a battle. So these turned out to be German paratroopers, but a special unit. They were a special unit because they were sent to capture the king of Norway. This is why Norwegian troops here, their position was very important. They've basically been told you have to defend this place at all cost or the king will be captured. Now I think it's also important for you to know that both sides were actually equal in manpower. There were 96 Germans versus 93 Norwegians. But of course, the Falchimegas had an edge in training, unit cohesion, and in firepower because many of the paratroopers were equipped with MP40s and MG34s. However, Norwegians had excellent marksmanship skills. Norwegians had this tradition of hunting and starting from a young age, boys would learn how to shoot. All right, the Germans fire flares. This takes place at midnight. Midnight, 1 a.m., April 10th. All right, you see an officer here running around. And the moment the battle starts, the firefight starts. Oh my God, it is so beautiful. Oh my God, well done. The moment a firefight breaks out, it's the beginning of chaos. It's very hard to know what's going on and to maneuver. As opposed to us armchair historians that have a complete view of the battlefield, when you're underground, you only have a very small portion of the battlefield. Oh yeah, I also wanted to show you this. This is a Kunstberg M29 machine gun. It was a Norwegian copy of the American 30 cal Browning 1917 machine gun. Now the reason I'm stopping and telling you about this is because at this battle, the Norwegians only had two of these. Now the worst is that with the gun, the tripod, the water and the ammo, all this weighed about 100 pounds in total. And that's not even the worst part. 
The weapon had to be disassembled, moved, reassembled by the crew in between each firing position. Not very convenient when you compare it to the German MG34. Nonetheless, it played an important role in all the battles during the German invasion of Norway. And they also served as the standard anti-aircraft weapon. But they were not that effective against modern aircraft. Um, this looks amazing. Oh, he's stressed. Excellent. He's stressed. Imagine reloading single rounds through bolt action rifle. Under enemy fire. Oh my god, yes. Take a look at that. Do you see how tiny the Germans are in the distance? I'm loving this movie. As of now, everything is on point. And this distance is not even far away, maybe 100 meters, 150 meters, but you see how the enemy can appear very small, even at this distance, if they take proper cover. It feels realistic, and had it been a Hollywood movie, the Germans would have just rushed in, fully exposed in the middle of the field. But you see how the Germans are not doing that here. You see, you have an open field, and they're not going to go for it. They're going to try to outflank the Norwegians. And you see, all the Germans here seem to be equipped with MP40s. I don't know how accurate that is. Many were equipped with uh, bolt-action rifles too. But the tracers look incredibly impressive. Okay, and check this out. What happened here is that as the Germans were firing flares, one of them fell on the Mitzkogen farm. And the entire thing started to burn. And in the end, what happened is that all the extra light that the fire provided kind of revealed the positions of all the Norwegian soldiers positioned around it. So once again, excellent. They stuck to actual events. I'm happy. I'm, I'm satisfied. Did he say over there? He literally said over there. If you're Norwegian, let me know in the comment section. Okay, this looks like trenches but it's like a path that you have to shovel your way through so it's uh, it could be done very quickly i also like that this battle scene is centered on this young teenager oh you see take this out attention to realism is very good as you can see here you have one of the soldiers with a helmet but the others don't these are probably civilians that went to help the norwegian soldiers make a stand Oh, 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 here, here, here. In the movie, it says it's jammed. Here, because here there is a machine gun. Remember, we saw one of them earlier before. Now that's the second one. And I have to admit, it's very close to actual events. In reality, at the beginning of the firefight, both machine guns did not work because they were water cooled and this caused problems in very cold weather. Imagine what it must feel to bring decent firepower and then it doesn't work. By the way, all the machine gun crews were manned by officers because they were the only ones that were trained on how to use these weapons. Regular Norwegian soldiers had not a single clue on how to use them. Now to get back to the story, in the middle of the firefight, eventually one of the crew managed to make their machine gun work. So the movie is not exactly the same thing as in the reality. But I'll forgive it because just like we can see here in the movie, the one near the farm couldn't be fixed. Only the one on the left flank managed to open fire. Now I'll let you guess from what directions the Germans outflanked the Norwegians. And you see how the fire really exposes their position here. Not only the burning of the farm actually reveals the position of all the Norwegian troops here. The Germans can clearly see where their enemies are. But the Norwegians can't see where the Germans are. Attention to detail. I like it. Even here, the Germans have a clear view on the main enemy machine gun. Okay, I think there, it's more ammunition here. And you see the constant tracers. It's beautiful, but terrifying at the same time. Okay, the grenades. Very good. The Germans are getting it closer. Oh, the grenades. Exactly like in the actual battle. I'm actually super happy. Basically, the German powers worked their way forward in bounds. While one group fired, the other would move forward. They would pop off rifle shots or burst from their machine pistols the moment they hit the ground and the second group would move forward. 
Now eventually they got actually close to Norwegian positions, close enough to be at grenade range. And they started throwing grenade after grenade on the Norwegians. Now fun fact, Norwegian troops were not equipped with grenades. They did not have any. So at this point, Norwegian troops start to get anxious. And what I like in this movie is that the casualties are not exaggerated, but the battle scene is still epic. Now casualty reports are always a bit messy and sources vary, but from what I read, Norwegians lost three wounded and the Germans lost three to five killed, including their commanding officer. Plus unknown number of wounded. Of course, it's accelerated. It took two, three hours for it to unfold, but the Germans eventually started to outflank the Norwegians and they got really close. And don't forget, Norwegians have bolt action rifles at close range against MP40s and grenades. They can't do much. <laughs> it sounds like in German, zu uh, deckung, take cover. Okay, you see how young teenagers, unexperienced troops might have a lot of bravery because they don't know in what type of danger they're going. So he's in front now. You see, took the shot. But the senior guy, the experienced guy, the older guy. Oh, you were killed by a grenade. Watch out for the grenade indicator. But jokes aside, I'm extremely sad for this young guy. He, he just doesn't know in what type of danger he, he stepped in. Oh, and I like that it's all silence. Wow. Okay, the... I think he's wounded. But it's not going well for Norwegians. I think that's their commanding officer. Oh, and they're falling back. They're running away. Oh! They're gonna leave them behind. Oh, they're all falling back. And the worst is, it's actually what happened. The moment the Germans got really close, Norwegian troops felt uncomfortable and they were about to get encircled, flanked, so they pulled back. And while it's true that Norwegian troops pulled back, the Germans also pulled back after this engagement. The Germans were not successful in capturing the King of Norway. With that being said, let me know in the comment section what you thought of my analysis. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to help me create more content like that, don't forget to support me on Patreon. The link is in the description.